Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Coming up here, we're going to get into a lot of trending topics. Like, is it time to bench Derek Carr? Did Devontae Adams only come to the Raiders for D.C.? Will Josh Jacobs return in 2023? These are the top trending topics. But before I get into them, we got to talk about the news. The Raiders have promoted Harvey Lange from the practice squad to the active roster, which has been expected because of the injury to Denzel Perriman, which is now officially official. I talked about it on our what was it Sunday show that Perriman had shoulder surgery, and now it's official. He's on IR. He's out for the season. I'm really hoping that they bring him back. I thought he had a really solid season, 14 tackles for loss, showed that he got a little bit better in the coverage game. Is he getting up there in age? Yes, I understand that. But to me, this is a player that I want back. Also on top of that, the Raiders, they signed linebacker Austin Calatro to the practice squad, and they released guard Willie Wright. So other news and rumors here on the Raiders Report. Remember, though, if you're a real one and you are subscribed, spam real one down in the comments. I know that people watch these shows, and I know that y'all interact with me. It also helps, though, to see who my real ones are. If you have it, though, what are you waiting for? We're the number one most watched Raiders show in the entire world for a reason. Over 129,000 subs. And I'll tell you this. Hit the sub button. And if you don't like the content we provide after a week, unsubscribe. Costs absolutely nothing. And I think this, you're going to learn a lot more by watching the show. And you're definitely going to have a good time. All right, let's get into these top trending topics. Over 1,000 people tuned in right now. It's time to bench Derek Carr. You ready? A lot of y'all think I'm going to give this one four just win babies, but I got to give it only two. And I'm totally changing my opinion just two days ago. And the reason is this, because it's a coin flip. And I'm going to explain to you why it is only two just win babies. But Josh McDaniels during his press conference on Monday hinted that Las Vegas could potentially bench Carr. He didn't say that they could bench him, but when he got asked about it, and we'll roll through some quotes here, he didn't not say it, right? Carr hasn't shown the ability to understand McDaniels' offense, and the reason why this is a conversation is because, yes, DC has struggled this season, and he struggled of late, but it's more to do with the future. And when you look at Derek Carr's contract, that's the reason why this whole benching discussion is, is what it is, because if he gets hurt, then you have to pay him. But let's break down Derek's contract a little bit. Carr has an injury clause. We all like to talk about the no-trade clause. Oftentimes, people forget about the injury clause. So let's just say Derek Carr, where he were to get injured over the final two games of the season, well, guess what? you got to pay him his full $32.9 million base salary in 2023, and then you also have to pay him $7.5 million in 2024. So you got to give him $40.4 million if he were to get injured in the next two games. This decision also has to be made three days after the Super Bowl. I believe that the decision made gets made way before that because they want to honor Derek Carr. So whether that's trade, whether that's a sign or he gets cut, signed somewhere else, that's going to be totally different. I believe, though, that this is the reason why the Raiders could potentially bench D.C. Now let's talk about what Josh McDaniels had to say on Derek Carr's contract if he gets injured. This was on Monday. I think there's a lot of things that are going to go into that bucket once we kind of sort through things after tonight. I think there's a lot of things that, should, that you should start to talk about relative to taking care of the people that are dealing with things like that. Injuries or contracts, what have you. I think you've got to consider all of that stuff. And the reason why I'm going to give it two just win babies again is because there's two ways that you can look at this. You can look at it as the long term, which if you're thinking McDaniels, who seems to me has always looked at things in the long term, you bench Derek Carr because you're not going to bring him back next season. At least I don't believe that you're going to bring him back. So you bench him. You don't risk that you have to pay $40.4 million. On the other hand, though, the short term is this. You can't bench Carr if you still have a chance to make the playoffs. We had a super chat come in earlier in the show from L.I. Raider. It said, if you bench Carr, it just shows your team that you're not trying to compete. I 100% agree with that. Long term, you bench Derek. Short term, though, you got to play D.C. because he gives you the best chance to win. I don't care what you say about Jared Stidham. I don't care what you say about Chase Garvers. Derek Carr gives you the best chance to win every single week. And people are like, oh, well, what happens if the Dolphins win? The Dolphins play at 1 o'clock on Eastern time. You're telling me you're going to practice all week with Derek Carr, take the number one reps, and then you're going to throw in Jarrett Stidham hours before the game? 
fans who are paying to see that game, that would be a huge middle finger. And as far as I'm concerned, the Raiders have given Raider Nation enough middle fingers this year. So be real with me, y'all. We're going to make this the pinned comment on today's show. Is it time to bench Derek Carr? Type B for bench, or I want you to type S for start. And you're going to get hit with a YouTube ad break, so scroll on down. You might as well give me your answer. B for bench, or I want you to type S for start. All right, coming up next here on the Raiders Report, more Derek Carr bench discussion because it is by far the top trending topic going on right now around social media, around the Las Vegas Raiders. But before we get into that, huge shout out to today's sponsor. And if anybody wants to take those receipts that you're going to be getting anyway at a restaurant, you're going to be getting anyway if you're going shopping. If you're not getting receipts, then well, you're probably shoplifting, which I don't recommend. So go to chatsports.com slash fetch. Now, guys, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the Fetch Rewards app here. So hopefully y'all are tuned in right now. Press the orange camera button and snap a photo of your receipt. Then hit submit and you'll see the confetti pop showing you that you've earned more rewards points. It's a simple process. You can also click the e-receipt function to get rewarded for your Amazon purchases or other online shopping by syncing your email account. You can then redeem those points for gift cards at Amazon, Starbucks, Walgreens, or hundreds of retailers and restaurants available. Fetch is available on Android and iPhone. Use our link, chatsports.com slash fetch, and enter promo code chat at sign up for 5,000 points when you scan your first receipt. That's the equivalent of a free $5 gift card to get started. It's a free app, and 5,000 bonus points is only for a limited time, so get started now. Chatsports.com slash fetch, and enter promo code chat. I was nice enough, Jeremy was nice enough, to put the links for you guys in the comments and in the description of today's show. Seriously, just snap your receipts. I did it in New York. I, I, I said this earlier in the show. I snapped receipts. I then earned gift cards for my trip to New York. I was able to get some Christmas presents. Seriously, it's going to be a really cool app that you're going to use. Chatsports.com slash fetch. Let's go to the next trending topic here on the Raiders Report. Car is the reason Devontae Adams is a Raider. If you follow me on social media, you probably already know my answer to this. But I've seen it so much over the past, I don't know, week, two weeks, month. It's been absolutely everywhere it's been at everywhere and you know what jeremy's saying this we're gonna get to that in just a second because i still want to talk about Derek carr and the whole benching saga going on got two more quotes to get to here we go josh mcdaniels on Derek carr for us to be able to win at this time of the year and be productive offensively you have to throw the ball better than what we've thrown at times here in the last month and a half We've been able to win some in spite of that overall, but clearly that's not the goal. The goal would be to be more productive than what we have been. Personally, I think what McDaniels is talking about here is an issue that I think a lot of Raider fans know. Derek plays well at the beginning of the season, and then he starts to struggle near the end. If this was just a one-year problem with McDaniels, sure. If this was a one-year problem with Gruden, okay. I mean, we're going on, though, years and years and years. And if you want to see even more numbers around Eric Carr's struggles throughout his career, I put it on Twitter, at Mitchell Renz 365 But the fact that you got a quarterback who's got a completion percentage in the month of December when it matters the most in the 50s, I mean, it's been bad. Like, we got to be able to face the facts. Derek has been bad. And the Raiders' defense, for the first time in a long time over the past five games, has played pretty damn well. So if you want to just stay up to date on all those cool stats, I do put stuff on Twitter, Instagram. I throw up on, or I shouldn't say I throw up on locals. I vent on locals with a lot of our diehard Raider fans over there. So join there. But I do got to give a shout out to our week 16 MVP. Huge shout out to Raiders podcast. Podcast, I sent you the Raiders report boots. So you should be getting that in the mail very, very soon. I know Podcast is going to be joining Jeremy and I for our watch party on Sunday against the Niners, and hopefully y'all will too. All right, let's go now to this story. Derek Carr, he's the reason Devontae Adams is a Raider. I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible. No, tuck rule, tuck that. And I want people to realize that Derek Carr is not the reason Devontae Adams became a Raider. Was he maybe the cherry on top? Sure. He was not the reason, though, that he became a Raider. And, I mean, go back and look at when Devontae had his press conference all the way back in March. He talked about all this stuff. Literally, Devontae Adams said, family and quality of life 
were the biggest factors. Adams also, when you listen to that interview, he kind of downplays the importance of Carr and coming to Vegas. He also mentions that his dad doesn't like to fly and travel, and he wanted to be able to come closer to his family because he wanted his family to be able to watch him play. When he was in Green Bay, family couldn't come to the games because they didn't want to make the trip. So now he gets to play for the team that he grew up rooting for, and his family gets to watch him. So this is what Devontae Adams said on family being the reason he came to Vegas. That stuff, that really matters to me. That stuff that really does weigh in on my mind when there's a decision to be made. Do I want to go through my whole career without having either of my grandparents from either side see me play? I didn't like that. Week one, when the Raiders played the Los Angeles Chargers, Devontae Adams bought a $500,000 suite for his family to watch him play. I mean, if that doesn't tell you that... I was kind of joking with Jeremy. I'm like, that's like you and me buying an Uber on our way to work, you know. But, I mean, he wanted his family to see him play, and that's how important it was to him. Here's Devontae Adams on coming to the Raiders. The turning point was really when I had to sit down and figure out what was best for me and my family. It wasn't just the teaming up with Derek. We didn't scheme it this offseason or whatever. I mean, everybody thought it was Derek Carr, Devontae Adams. That's the reason why he came. And I want everybody who's watching the show, say it with me. Down in the comments, out loud, send it to a friend on Twitter, send it to somebody on Instagram. Devontae Adams didn't come to the Raiders to be with Derek Carr. He came to the Raiders to be a Raider, to play for the team he grew up rooting for, to play for a team that he could finally have his grandparents, his family come and watch him play. Was Derek the cherry on top? Yes. But the Raiders were the reason. His family was the reason he became here. Does that make sense? I hope so. Let's go to the final trending topic here on the Raiders report. Josh Jacobs, is he returning? I got to give this one to Just Win Babies. And it's another coin flip to me. If the Raiders were smart, they would franchise tag Josh Jacobs. That's the issue with that statement, if the Raiders were smart. And <laughs> I want to sit up here and tell you that I have the confidence in this organization and Mark Davis, Josh McDaniels to make the right decisions, but I don't. The Raiders declined Jacobs' fifth-year option, which I will 100% say I was on board for because I'm not team pay running backs. He's going to be a free agent in 2023, and we know how upset Jacobs was after the loss in Week 16. But when you watch the Raiders play this year, when you think about the idea of bringing in a brand new quarterback, what's the best thing that you can do with a brand new quarterback? Assure that he has a phenomenal running game. I think the guy leading the NFL right now in rushing yards would be a good reason to try to bring him back. So was I wrong saying that the fifth-year option was the right thing to do by cutting it because it would have only cost him $8 million? Yes, I'll take that L. But he earned the money, and you should franchise tag him. And if it costs you $12.7 million, then you need to do it. But this is what Josh Jacobs had to say, and this is why Raider Nation is freaking out and saying, oh, he's gone. This is what he said after the loss of the Pittsburgh Steelers on Saturday, Christmas Eve. Everybody wants to talk about the defense, but they made the stops when they were supposed to. We got to help them out, and I'm tired of saying we got to help them out. It's just frustrating. We still had opportunities to make plays. I feel like in times where we were close and we felt like we were about to get a big one, we went away from it. You know, and in the past game was working early. So, you know, this is what it is. But to win these games, you know, especially in down the stretch, especially you're up against a team like this in the cold, you've got to run the ball. So that's a factor on everybody involved top to bottom. So there you go. You kind of hear Josh Jacobs talk like, yeah, the defense deserves a little bit of love there. I think the nation's too hard on them. I said this on Twitter, and I'll you know kind of short phrase it for you all, but I thought it was laughable that you run the ball five times with Josh Jacobs in that game, score a touchdown, and then he gets 10 carries for the rest of the game. This is just one of those simple facts of if it's not broken, don't fix it. And Josh McDaniels, it just overcomplicates everything. You're telling me when you know you got a running back as good as Josh Jacobs right now and you're 6-3 and three when Jacobs has 20-plus carries and 0-6 oh and when he doesn't, you're going to go away from that guy after having a beautiful first drive, five carries for Jacobs, it's over 14 freaking plays, and you score your only touchdown. Then you're going to go away from them? I mean, it's just mind-blowingly dumb to me. And then this is really what kind of got people worried. Jacobs, I'm tired of dealing with this. Every day I come here, bust my ass, and I see the guys busting their ass. 
and the result is not there. For me, the last four years, the result has not been there. And quite frankly, I don't know what else to do. Well, I know this. Jacob's going to be looking for a fat payday. And when you look at the highest paid running backs per year, I'm a believer that the number is going to come somewhere around the Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon type of figure. If I was Jacobs, I'd be looking for 12.7, which you're not. He might get over Dalvin Cook, but that is the franchise tag number. And this might not be a popular opinion for a lot of people out there, but this is my opinion. You either franchise tag Jacobs or you let him walk. Because to me, if you sign him long term, it's going to be a deal that's going to be, I think, around $12.7, $13 million per year with a running back who has had injury issues in the past. Also, as we've seen, you have the rushing leader and you're six and nine. That tells me that you got a lot of other holes that you need to fill, giggity, before you can go out and pay a running back. Good teams, playoff caliber teams, can afford to pay a running back big time money, long term. The Raiders aren't in that position, but I do think that franchise tagging him at 12.7 would be the smart decision for the Raiders. So you tell me, will number 28, will Josh Jacobs be back on the Raiders next season? Why for yes, or you can type your end for no.